so maybe wisdom isn't something that's out of reach until we're older. Maybe, in fact, wisdom is something we can all tap into from a very early age. Every time I talk to a kid, honestly, I feel a little bit, I'm often shocked by how much insightful stuff they have to say and also how uninhibited they are to say it. This is Adora Spitak. She goes to college in California. She's also a published writer and speaker, and she's 18 years old. But years ago, when Adora was 12, she was just another kid. and She was noodling on an idea that made perfect sense to her. We have this vision of smarts or of wisdom as kind of this old sage in a tower with a long beard. It's kind of uh, my image anyway, who just dispenses wisdom and advice um, in the pages of some crinkly parchment book. So Dora thought, as any confident 12-year-old might, I should give a TED talk about this, about the wisdom of kids. And because she was pretty good with a computer... I actually ended up looking up who the folks were at TED who made decisions about speaker lineup, and I was able to send an email off to the curator and to um, some other folks just in the leadership, and they actually responded, and they were intrigued. They said that they would think about it, which is, you know, a polite way of saying no, right? But uh, then... A couple weeks before that year's conference, this is in 2010... They called up and said, hey, we know this is short notice, but we have an opening. And it was like, okay, yeah, of course. <laughs> so when we come back in just a minute, 12-year-old Adora Svitak's TED Talk on the wisdom of kids. And on the show today, ideas about what it means to become wise. And as 12-year-old Adora Svitak explained in her TED Talk from 2010, being wise and being old are not necessarily the same thing. Now, I want to start with the question, when was the last time you were called childish? For kids like me, being called childish can be a frequent occurrence. Every time we make irrational demands, exhibit irresponsible behavior, or display any other signs of being normal American citizens, we are called childish. Which really bothers me. After all, take a look at these events. Imperialism and colonization, world wars, Ask yourself, who's responsible? Adults! Now, what have kids done? Well, Anne Frank touched millions with her powerful account of the Holocaust. Ruby Bridges helped to end segregation in the United States. And most recently, Charlie Simpson helped to raise 120,000 pounds for Haiti on his little bike. So as you can see evidenced by such examples, age has absolutely nothing to do with it. The traits the word childish addresses are seen so often in adults that we should abolish this age discriminatory word when it comes to criticizing behavior associated with irresponsibility and irrational thinking. Thank you. Then again, who's to say that certain types of irrational thinking aren't exactly what the world needs? Maybe you've had grand plans before, but stopped yourself thinking, that's impossible, or that costs too much, or that won't benefit me. For better or worse, we kids aren't hampered as much when it comes to thinking about reasons why not to do things. Kids can be full of inspiring aspirations and hopeful thinking, like my wish that no one went hungry, or that everything were free, kind of utopia. How many of you still dream like that and believe in the possibilities? Sometimes a knowledge of history and the past failures of utopian ideals can be a burden because you know that if everything were free, then the food stocks would become depleted and scarce and lead to chaos. On the other hand, we kids still dream about perfection. And that's a good thing because in order to make anything a reality, you have to dream about it first. Children having children. Pestilence and famine Ain't these the last days Oh, ain't these the days Ah, redemption is at hand And only the righteous shall stand in this judgment 